video is the first part of a series of videos I'll be making for pick fitting XPS using curve fitting. So curve fitting is a free software available on SourceForge at the address shown here. And, and then you have in the file sections, you would have a data tutorial folder where I will add more and more data samples and in this case it's MNO2. Okay. So this is the software, Curve Fitting version V1.505 and in here it's the MNO2 samples. So the combo box here shows you the Carbon 1S, MN2P, Oxygen 1S on the wide. So in the wide, if we just click there, we get the wide range and at 284, you get the carbon 1S, the oxygen 1S on the MN2P, and then some ocean lines. So usually we start with fitting the carbon 1S that we would then use for binding energy correction. So when you, before you start fitting, it's always good to go into the knowledge to just uh, know what you should be looking for. So in the help, there is a knowledge where you can find all the different websites, that I'm usually going through. One is called Thermo Knowledge, so that's the one I would usually go for to just check very quickly uh, what I'm expecting. And this is made by Thermo, so I go down into the periodic table and then in this case going to carbon and then I can see that I would be looking made mainly around three, three species. The CC at 284, yes, I'm getting that. And then the OC double bono around 288.5, maybe it's around there. And then something maybe around 286. So that looks maybe slightly asymmetric. So maybe that's because there is a there is a peak. Okay. Another another website that is also good to go is the one made by Mark Pissinger, which is the XPS fitting. So there, there will be a, um, a very nicely made um, website where you can go, for example, into Carbon and, and then look into some kind of pick table for, uh, for Carbon. Okay. This is the Carbon, sorry. And so we have slightly more species and you also get a, a pick table which will be shown here. So that's what I'll be doing. So now we expect here maybe around three to four picks as shown here. So we expect the CC, the CO, the C double bono, and if it's well resolved, we may see the C double bono and then the OC double bono. So let's go into the pick fitting. And for that, we are gonna use the pick fitting screen here. And we would first use the background, so we'll use the first tab. The first tab is for the background, the second tab is for the pick fitting. So in the background you have the methods which provide you different uh, background type. So one is called the linear, the Shirley, a smart, which is a combination of linear and Shirley, depending if the background goes down, then it's linear, or the background goes up, and then that means it's Shirley. And then the multi-region smart is the default one, that's the one I would tend to use. So at first, you would do a wrench using the vertical line here. So you just click on the plot and you choose a wrench around there. And then you simply create a background and you can see that uh, because the background is going up, it's created a Shirley background. If you click on control down, if you press control and then the down keys, you can actually zoom in into the noise. And from there, you can also play with the offset. So that's done with the shift key. So if you press the shift key, usually um, it's not going to work the first time, so it's going to move the vertical line. But if you unpress it and then repress it, then you can uh, play with the shift key, play with the, the background, sorry. And then here, if you unpress it, now I'm playing with the, sh the, v the vertical line and then re pressing the shift, I can now redo the, the shift, the, the background. So this is now good enough. 
But I can zoom out or I can use this right click zoom out. Now I'm getting to something quite nice. Okay. And then now we come to the pick fitting. So here we have the fitting models and we have a di lots of different um, models available, but the best models are shown here. By default, the GL model, which is the simplest model, but not the most accurate one. So I would suggest to use the void model or something extremely similar, which is simpler, the SGL. So that's the summation of Gaussian to Lorentzian. So we would start to show you the difference. I would start with the GL. And then because it's a nest, we cannot, we should not be adding doublet. So let's add one pick first. And as you can see, it goes to the maximum pick. So that's carbon 1S, the CC. And then another pick. So he decided this is the one he would go for. It may go around there. And you can use the tab key to select the picks you want to move. So for example, you would want to move this pick around there, but we will leave it to where he found uh, best suited. And then we'll add the third pick. So for now, just three picks. And then the rule of thumb is that they should usually have the same width on the same shape. Okay, so then the pick A will be our main pick and pick B on C should be in function of A. And we go into the width column, the full width half maximum, and then the green row are the constraints. So at the moment, pick B and C are allowed to change the width between 0 0.3 and 3.5. So you're just going to type A in here, and then it will straight know you, you want A times 1. And you do the same to the pick C, and now all those picks will follow, um, pick B and C will follow pick A. So they will all have the same width. And then the shape is controlled by the LG ratio. So the amount of Lorentzian to Gaussian ratio. The rule of thumb again is for a peak higher than um, one EV, usually the width for an SGL is around 20%. If it's a GL, it should be around 30%. So let's leave it to 20%. And the shape of the two orders should also follow pick A. So we are going to put that there. So once this is done, we can now fit. Okay. Um, I must mention, if we go to A, I have realized that this was a GL. So this should not be 20%, but that should be around 30%. So if I now fit this, and maybe I will change this value later, but he wanted, as you can see, if I go to fit n times, he found that the best model was done with 24. So I can actually fix this by putting 30 and write fi, like fixed, and that will fix the model at 30%. Okay, and then now there's hardly any difference between the two. This is the best default. But the GL is known to not fit properly at the, on the, at the end, at the edge of the peak. And so this is why I would recommend to use the SGL, which is so close to the void function. So now the SGL would look like this. So let's go back again and choose an SGL and maybe use the same type of model. So I would move that here. Maybe I will move this bit there. And then use exactly the same parameters that we've used for the GL model. See? And now we would fit. And the RSD value went from 2.38 to now 2.02. So it's a, it's a better fit than the GL model. And now this is around 10%. That's the best he found. The reason is because usually at one EV, it is around 20%. So if the, the, the bigger the width, the smaller is the, 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 the Lorentzian. So that means it tends to go towards zero. It's not a full Gaussian yet. It's usually not never a full Gaussian. This is maybe the maximum it would go to. So I could decide to put that to 20, 
but I do not think um, this would this would fit as well. So as you can see, it went back to 2.37. So I would maybe let it let it vary to the way he wants to vary. Okay, and as you can see now, it went down, and so it's 10 percent. So now. I would assume that there is only there are only three picks, and so I would now name the picks to CC, CO, just like the pick library. They, you can call it COC. I call it CO, and then this one would be more a C double bono. or even the OC double bond. So this would be how you fit carbon bonus. The reason why we only see three picks is, I believe, it is um, not well resolved. I, that's why I've included also another carbon bonus, which is slightly different. You may see that now um, you may see a more elongated. And if you compare both, both samples, so now I'm going into the sample manager and you can then compare both, both things using this plot. And now you can see that actually the width of this pink one, the carbon 1S1, is, is slightly smaller. So now you have access, um, you have a better resolution in this, in this level here. So we can try again using this three pick model. Let's um, go to this one and maybe we will go into this pick model first and copy this pick table. Then we'll go back into this one. So I'm using F2 or this plot and now I will create a new background. something like that. I may again go down and I realize that actually I may want something like that. And slightly more, something around there. And I zoom out again. And now I will add my three picks, paste pick table, and I will try to see it's a different intensity as we can see from, from our data, it's a different intensity. But I will just, um, change maybe give him a chance and let's see what happened okay so then let's have a look to the data and you know you can see that it doesn't really fit and that's when you realize actually there there is a third a fourth peak just like um move that away just like you would expect from xpsfitting.com, um, those three picks. So this is very similar data to what uh, Mark Bissinger showed here. And so now I'm going to add another, another pick. So I will use the tab key again to move the pick. I will expect that this one is around there. I will expect then this one is around here. And now I will create a new pick, which again, would be in function of the first pick. So in for, for the width and for the shape. And you've noticed how for the sample manager, I have something here to minimize when I don't need it here. Yeah? And now I will just let the things come. And now this is more what I would expect. So this is at 284.6 and I would expect CO to be close to 286. And this is what you would see in here. You would see that CO is usually at 286, CC is around 284.8, then you have OC double bono, which vary quite a lot depending if it's C double bono, OC double bono. So I tend to give a big range for those ones. So now I will add 
the value. So this is definitely now 287. So that's not OC double bono because it's more electronegative um, than C double bono. And so this is the OC double bono. Okay. And this is me now uh, done with my plot. And this is the end of the first part.